de-squeeze and export anamorphic footage straight from your camera, and it may not look quite right. There's a clear and simple list of steps I enable in order to monitor my anamorphic footage correctly and finish my anamorphic footage correctly, and I wanna share these steps with you today. Some cameras de-squeeze footage for you in camera, but the majority of consumer, prosumer, and even professional cameras don't de-squeeze anamorphic footage either properly or in all the flavors one might deliver in. If you're shooting on a camera that is de-squeezing, cropping, and delivering that perfect 239 to one file for you, you probably don't need this video. But if you wanna shoot with any squeeze factor lens and know how to properly deliver any resolution, this video is for you. We need to pick an internal recording format first. The Sony FX6 shoots either 16 or 17 by nine. I'm choosing 16 by nine. You'll generally wanna choose a format that utilizes the most height of your sensor. Fun fact, most vintage and modern anamorphic Super 35 or full frame lenses will cover your camera's full sensor height. In order to monitor your footage properly, you're gonna need a good monitor. A monitor that can de-squeeze anamorphic footage, give you aspect ratio guides, and crop into your feed. So here we go. First, de-squeeze your image per your anamorphic lens of your choice. I have a two times lens here, so I'm gonna de-squeeze two times. But on these small HDs, you have the ability to do a custom de-squeeze if you had to. Next, pick your finishing format. Are you gonna deliver in traditional 2.39 to one? Some shows nowadays are delivering in 2.2 to one and two to one, some even in 16 by nine. If you're not 100% sure what you wanna finish in, give it some thought and then play around with the monitoring tools I'm about to show you. Usually you can monitor something like 2.39 to one, but then in post realize you'd rather deliver in two to one and still be okay. But it's best to monitor exactly what you're looking to deliver to ensure your compositions are exactly what you shot on the day. Now enable that aspect ratio guide. Finally, enable crop mode and line up your crop to the aspect ratio guides you set earlier. See what a difference this makes? Now that we're monitoring our footage properly, we can go shoot. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to size, scale, and deliver for your edit and export. The idea for post is the same, but not entirely straightforward. So let me show you what I do. Personally, I want everything in a 16 by nine timeline. That's just me and my taste. Whether someone is watching your video on their phone, desktop, TV, or theater, the 16 by nine wrapper is always going to display properly. And that's why I do it. If you deliver a file that is widescreen 2.39 to one to a theater or a client, there's not much stopping it from being displayed to fill the entire screen. This could mean half of your image doesn't get displayed. I'm going to do all of this in Final Cut Pro. If you're in a different editor, don't worry. The steps are simple enough that you'll be able to follow along. Let's create the 16 by nine timeline. All my timelines are 3840 by 2160. That's 4K UHD. Next, we'll bring in our anamorphic footage, which as you can see is not yet de-squeezed and looks all types of funky. So let's de-squeeze it according to what squeeze factor the lens was. Remember I shot on two times anamorphic, so that means I need to stretch only the X axis to 200%. If this was a 1.5X lens, I would stretch it to 150%. And if it was a 1.33 times lens, I'd stretch it to 133%. Sorry for interrupting your scheduled broadcast, but I just wanna make something crystal clear here. I've always taken the X axis scale and made it 200% according to my squeeze factor. And then seeing as it fills the entire 16 by nine frame here, I bring the scale back down to 100. And what I'm just realizing now is that it's taking the Y axis and making it 50%. So a more direct route than what I'm explaining here is forget the X axis altogether and just make the Y axis 50%. If it was a 1.5 X squeeze factor, you would make this Y axis 66% of what it is. And if it was a 1.33 X lens, you would make this y-axis 75% of what it is. It's just math, but I'm gonna go back to the video, which is where I bring the x-axis up to 200%, and I pull the global scale in order to respond to that back down to 100, and it makes the y-scale 50. Thanks. Just like we use the aspect ratio guides on our viewing monitor, 
we need to use letterbox templates in order to ensure perfect delivery. Premium Beat has free letterbox templates available on their site that I've been using for years, and I will put a link to this page in the description below. I'll take the letterbox template that represents the finishing ratio I want from the 4K UHD folder and drop it onto the timeline above my footage. As you can see, nothing happened. We can't yet see the letterbox template. That's because it's black and it's hiding up there. We can't see it as a guide unless we made our background white or we simply jump into the next step, which is globally start punching into our footage until we see the edge of the guide and stop. There we have it. We de-squeezed, used guides, and cropped in just like we did with our monitor. Now, you can simply copy and paste these settings to the rest of your footage, and you're done. So there you have it, a simple little workflow to make sure you're monitoring and finishing your anamorphic footage properly. Let me know if you like this video in the comments below. I really hope it helped, and I'll see you in the next one.